Let's start with some instant gratification. We're going to patch together a typical sound or voice on this Modular V synthesizer. In doing so, we'll get an idea of what the different modules are and a common interconnection of them. Now, the first thing I need to point out is that there is something in Modular V that makes your life much easier. In a hardware modular synth, or also in some software modular synths, your keyboard normally has two very special output connections. A pitch control voltage, a voltage that corresponds to what key you're playing, and a gate output, a voltage that goes high whenever you're holding a note down, which goes low whenever you release a note. That tells the synthesizer how to articulate or shape the sound of a note in response to the note you're playing. Now, fortunately, the modular V does not force you to make this connection for every single patch. They have it built into the modules. For example, on our main oscillator control section, oscillators being our main tone generators inside a synthesizer, there's this little symbol K1. That K refers to key follow, how accurately an oscillator or other device follows the keyboard. At a normal slope setting of one, every one octave change in the keyboard results in a one octave change in whatever's been assigned to follow it, such as an oscillator. However, the Arturia Modular V software allows you to have four different key follow settings, different strengths or amounts that a parameter can follow the keyboard. For example, if I set this down to, say, half strength, you'll hear that the oscillator doesn't follow the octaves on the keyboard. Or if I increase it over one, we get a very exaggerated response to the keyboard. For oscillators, unless you're doing alternate tunings with different numbers of notes per octave, you'll want to keep the key follow slope at one, which is usually its default. But there's other parameters, such as filters, where you indeed might want to have alternate key follow settings. Similarly, to trigger an envelope, the thing that shapes the loudness or the tonal contour of a note, you would normally have to patch a gate to its input to tell it when to get louder and when to get softer. Well, in this case, if you click on the input, instead of a patch cord, you get a long list of possible inputs hardwired behind the scenes for you. The default is keyboard trigger on, and that is indeed a very good default. That means whenever I play a note on the keyboard, either in the software or over MIDI, to indeed trigger these envelopes to start playing. When I release the key, tell the envelope to wrap things up. I'll leave that at its default as well. Now, the way that the modular V software is set up is to resemble an old modular Moog synthesizer. And the old Moogs grouped together their tone generators or oscillators in a very certain way. They had one module, which they called the oscillator driver, and it controlled three slave oscillators. What this allowed you to do is have one master frequency or pitch control that then would set the tuning for all three of those oscillators together. Likewise, you could set other parameters for all of the slave oscillators in the group, such as the waveform shape, known as the pulse width here, and also have separate controls for frequency modulation, the pulse width, etc. So inside our first oscillator group, which is following the keyboard, I'm going to select one of the waveform outputs from the first oscillator in that group. I happen to like square waves, so I'm going to pick that one first. I'm going to click on the output of that square wave. You'll notice that this patch cord starts to grow as soon as I do that. And all of these red circles indicate potential destinations that I could patch this square wave into. Now, in this case, I want to patch it to our voltage controlled amplifier's input. A voltage controlled amplifier or VCA is what controls the loudness of a note during its life, going up from silence to some maximum level, and falling back down to an intermediate level, then falling back to silence. In most modular synths, the VCA is a separate module with a voltage input to control its loudness. Well, in the case of the modular V, that controller and envelope is built into the master VCA module. A typical synthesizer envelope has multiple stages. In this case, the attack stage, or A, which says how long does it take to come from silence up to a maximum level. The decay stage, D, 
It says, after you've reached maximum level, how long does it take to fall back to an intermediate level? The sustain level, which is that intermediate level. And then the release time, or R, says, after I've released a note, how long does it take to go back to silence? When I play a note with its default settings, we hear the amplifier open and close to let the pitch of the oscillator through. Now this oscillator by default in this patch is tuned very low. So I'm gonna set it up to no semitone offset and take it from 32 feet, which is its lowest octave, like the longest pipe on a pipe organ, and move it up to eight feet, which is a very typical pitch. I'm going to increase the sustain level, what level we hold while I'm holding down a note. And you'll notice that the waveform that's on the output of my synthesizer gets larger or smaller in response to the actions of this amplifier. When I start a note, the waveform grows taller, it falls back to an intermediate level, then goes back down to a flat line, no sound. Let's say I wanted that note to swell rather than start immediately like a percussive sound. To do that, I'd increase the attack time. I'll go back to pretty short attack. The decay, again, is how long it takes to go from that loudest level back to that intermediate sustain level. Short decay means you have a very short, snappy attack that immediately falls back down that intermediate level. A longer decay means it stays loud longer. Let's try our lower sustain level to make that more obvious. Maybe split the difference. I'll go with that for now. The release time is how long it takes to fall to silence after I've let go of a note. Again, I'm following the keyboard trigger to tell this envelope when to start and when to stop. If I had a very short release time, the note would end quite abruptly. If I had a longer release, it would have more of a decay into silence. Let's go somewhere in between. So it's a little bit of a ring out after I let go of a note. So that's a very, very basic patch. One oscillator, one amplifier controlled by one envelope. But it can quickly become boring. The note sounds the same whenever I'm holding onto it. And each note sounds the same. What's very common in a synthesizer is to, instead of going straight to the amplifier, take the output of your waveform and instead run it into a filter. A filter removes some of the harmonic components of your sound. So I'm gonna go into the input of my filter, take the output of my filter, and drag that to my VCA input. Now you hear a much duller sound. That's because the filter is removing a lot of these harmonics. You notice we only have one spike instead of a large array of harmonics. But to change that, I would edit the cutoff frequency of the filter. That says, at what point do we start removing harmonics? If I turn the cutoff frequency up, we'd let all the harmonics through. And you see the wave shape change in response, as well as this harmonic mix. Most filters also have a resonance control, which is basically a feedback loop that emphasizes the harmonics right around the cutoff frequency. So let's increase the resonance and change the frequency. Okay, that's a little bit more interesting, but what if we wanted the tone character of a note to articulate over its life, just like its loudness does? Well, to do that, we'd bring another envelope into the game. I'm gonna take the output of this envelope 
into the modulation input on the filter. That's because I wanted to modulate or change the reaction of the filter over time. I'll make sure that this envelope is also being triggered by my keyboard trigger in. And now, you can hear the cutoff change over the course of the note. Let's go ahead and slow it way down so you can really hear this emphasized. I have an intermediate sustain level and a fast release. And you can get a bit funky when you also have a fast decay as well. Now, if you want to change how strongly that envelope was affecting the cutoff of the filter, you need to change the modulation depth. That's what these little orange lines are above each jack. That's basically a control level or attenuator for each of these inputs. So I'll sustain a note, click on the orange area, and increase the effect that the envelope has over this filter. Or I could decrease it. So it just has a very small effect. Or I could even drag down to make it a negative effect. Where we'll start low and then add more harmonics back in. And you quickly can see that these different controls are quite interactive. As you raise one level, you might need to lower another level, etc. Indeed, it's fun to interactively tweak a sequence while it's playing. So I'm going to set up an arpeggio. Start tweaking these controls. changing the envelope controlling the filter, I really changed its character over time. And let's also change the shape of the loudness contour. Very short and percussive. go to a faster sequence. So there's your first patch using the Modular V software. A very simple one oscillator, one filter, one amplifier patch with one envelope controlling the cutoff frequency, the action of the filter, and another envelope controlling the loudness of the note, the amplifier. In the following movies, we're going to dive into each of these modules in a lot more detail to see just what range of sounds we can coax out of them.